When I started reading it, I felt really bad about myself. I felt a lot of shame and condemnation, like shame of like, you should have been read this. Like, you've been a Christian for so long. Why are you reading it now? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, like you can see from the oh, in today's video, like you can see from the title, sorry, that was a tongue twister. I'm just gonna be sharing with you guys the things that I've learned, how God helped me to finish reading the Bible. It's all by the grace and glory of God. It's literally nothing to boast about because it's something that we should do as Christians, even though sometimes we don't, honestly, because it is a challenge, right, to be consistent with reading the Bible. But I want to share this not to boast, not to put me on a pedestal, none of that, because the devil knows the Bible the devil used the word of God against Jesus in the desert so like it's nothing to boast about it's not enough to know it it's actually to live it but I just want to share that my journey because many years ago I did a video where I shared how I started reading the Bible I spent 11 years of my life being a Christian and not reading the Bible on my own consistently or like really at all because it just didn't make sense to me it was intimidating and I wasn't really encouraged in the church that I grew up in to read the Bible the pastor unfortunately started to distort the word itself the Bible to gain money and stuff like that. Obviously not every church is like that. That's just where I grew up. I go to a church that's not like that anymore. So don't be afraid. There's churches that don't do that. But because of that experience, it led me more to be like, no, I need to know who Jesus is on my own and the only way for me to do that is by reading the bible that's kind of how i started but i just want to share with you guys what i've learned how i started to hopefully encourage you to read your bible it's the bread of life it's our bread of life it's our way to know jesus our savior it's really really important and it's not emphasized enough you know it can seem intimidating but it's really not hopefully this video encourages you to grab your bible and start your journey as well of reading it every day so let's go right into the video Okay, so first I want to start off by sharing with you guys how I started. So like I mentioned earlier, I grew up in a church that distorted the word. So that already gave me a push and encouragement to be like, no, I want to know Jesus for myself. But I was very, like even though I was Christian, without realizing it, I was very worldly. Like my life wasn't the most spiritual life when I stopped going to the church I grew up in. I was very ambitious, which isn't wrong and nothing bad with that. But because of my ambition, like I wouldn't pray or read the Bible. I didn't know how to read the Bible <laughs> to start with. And when it came to prayer, I felt like I didn't have enough time. I didn't see the necessity that I had to pray, which is a prideful thing and also a very ignorant thing and way to go about life, which I didn't really realize then. I thought like I'm good. God knows my heart. I don't really need to pray like he's going to protect me no matter what, which yes, he will protect you. But also you need to seek his protection, his will and his guidance in your life. Because as Christians, we don't run the show. We don't run our own life. God does. And how will God run my life? How can I say he's my Lord and my savior if I'm not communicating with him every day and getting to know him as well? Because prayer is our way to communicate with God and also his way to communicate with us. The most clear way that he communicates with us is through his word because his word is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God in flesh. So when we read the word of God, the Bible, we get to know Jesus more, who is our Lord and our Savior. And we get to know God in general, right? The Trinity. We get to know the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus. It deepens our relationship with Him and to Him. I went on a ramble, but that's what helped me start reading the Bible. Um, because I wasn't going to church for two years, um, before I started visiting the church that I go to now, and I, I love, I found myself feeling really empty because obviously I wasn't praying, I wasn't reading the Word. But I couldn't connect the dots. I just knew that I had done a lot of stuff at my college. I was very proud of the things that I had done. But those things that I thought would fill me, the doing X, Y activity, creating a space for people on campus to do this or that and like feel better. Those things weren't fulfilling me because once the semester ended, I felt empty. And I was like, I'm a Christian. Why do I feel empty? Why do I feel like I don't really know my purpose? So I started looking for a book around my house. And I understood that the book I should have picked up was the Bible, and I did for a second, but I was very intimidated by it. I felt like only preachers or pastors really, really could understand it. Like, I just felt like I couldn't understand it. So I went for, for a different book, and my mom had this book called A Purpose Driven Life in Spanish. It was a book by Rick Warren, and I've heard other people's testimonies online who have also been impacted by this book. But I picked up that book. I would read it every day for 40 days or I tried to stick to it every day. And in making time to pray and read that book, even though it was in the Bible, it 
led me a little closer to the Lord because it talked about our God-given purpose and it used Bible verses and it explains like what the Christian life is really about in its essence. It's not a prosperity gospel life of God is just here to give me whatever I desire, but it's a life of surrender and submission to the Lord. So that's how I started. And then in 2019, someone from my church gifted me a Bible and I was like, okay, I think I should start, you know, reading it. Like, I think I, this is my time. But just for anyone who hasn't read the Bible and is finding it hard, something that I went through is that when I started reading it, I felt really bad about myself. I felt a lot of shame and condemnation, like shame of like, you should have been read this. Like, you've been a Christian for so long. Why are you reading it now? And when I started feeling that way, I felt kind of discouraged. Like I should have done this a long time ago because I've been Christian for 11 years. Like since I was 11 years old, why have I not done this already? And then when I expressed that to Ernesto, who's my fiance now, at the time we were just friends. And when I expressed that to him, he was like, that's the enemy. Like that's the devil bringing thoughts into your head, making you feel bad. He knows the power there is in the word of God. I don't know if he said explicitly like that, but that's what, basically what I understood. And that was really encouraging for me and it pushed me to be like, you know what? Even if I if I felt like I should have read this a long time ago, at least I'm doing it now and that's what's important. And reading the Bible has so much power. Like the Bible itself, the word of God itself says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It penetrates bone and marrow and it tests your motives. Like I don't, I'm gonna put the verse, okay? I'm paraphrasing. It, it really goes deep when you read the word of God. And the word of God also says that the word of God is useful for teaching, rebuking, instructing. Like the word of God is there to guide us in our Christian life and to correct us. That's what happened. When I started reading the Bible, I felt so convicted about so many things. So the very ambitious life that I was living, and sometimes I can still live, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still, God is helping me in that, to put his kingdom above any other worldly thing. Still working, right? Because the Bible also says to be diligent and be productive and if you're a lazy person like you're not gonna eat but to not forget the kingdom of god and put his kingdom first and use our gifts for him not just for our own benefit or for our career um working diligently in our career in our work doing everything as if it is for god and not for human masters but also not forgetting the kingdom of god and preaching and evangelizing stuff like that like it really convicted me a lot and maybe that's why sometimes it's hard to read the bible because you're being confronted about the areas in your life that are not in alignment with God and that you need to surrender. Well, that was one thing that I learned. If you're confused about where to start in the Bible, I have a whole series about that and you can click it up here. But what helped me start was starting in the Gospels and understanding that even though the Bible starts off with the book of Genesis, it can be a little confusing if you start up with the book of Genesis because Jesus isn't introduced until the New Testament, which is like far into the Bible. Don't feel pressured to read the Bible from the very first page to the last. You don't have to. It's a book of many books. It's a book that has 66 books. What I was advised by someone on campus that I met, they told me to start in the Gospels. So I started reading Matthew and then the books that follow that, which I believe was Mark and then John and then Luke. I could be messing up the order, but <laughs> I started reading those books first because those books talk, talk about the life of Jesus. And as Christians, we're followers of Jesus. So if I wanna know how to be a good follower or a follower of Jesus, then I need to look at his life. So I started with those books that talked about his life. And then from there, I continued reading the New Testament to learn more about life after Jesus. Like what are we instructed to do? after Jesus died and resurrected, like what did his followers inspired by the Holy Spirit instruct us to do? So I went from there and then I went to the Old Testament and it's just been completely life-changing. Like I wouldn't read a whole bunch each day. I just read a little bit each day and I would pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what it is that he wants to tell me through the scripture. And that would help me so much. Like God spoke to me and has continued to speak to me so much through his word like don't underestimate that i know there's a lot of people like me who make youtube content about god and we might do bible studies and shorts and reels sharing you the word of god but that is just like a supplement like you we cannot live our life eating supplements like if i were just to take a multivitamin or a whole bunch of little vitamins to like supplement my life that's not i can't just take the vitamins or the supplements i need 
hardcore meals i need breakfast lunch and dinner i need snacks i feel like social media sometimes and it's it's happened to me can be those supplements that that remind us to seek god or that teach us something about the bible but it's not the same as having a full course meal with your own bible opened up so that the Holy Spirit can speak to you what you need to hear that day. A relationship with God is a personal relationship. So we cannot be relying on secondhand meals or secondhand supplements or secondhand um, teachings from other people. That's great. That's amazing. That's part of it. That shouldn't be the only connection we have to God is what I'm being taught in church and what I'm being taught online. It needs to be what, what God is teaching me through my personal one-on-one -on -one time with his word and with his presence in prayer. And something I've learned from this journey of reading the Bible is that a relationship with God takes a lot of work. Not a lot of work where it's like super difficult because having a relationship with God is super simple. Like break it down to the basics. It's just praying and talking to God, reading his word, evangelizing, serving others. Like it's simple in the sense of like, it's very straight to the point. We're the ones that make it complicated. It's difficult where it's like, you have to, you can't just, like, you have to discipline yourself to seek God. Like, to read the Bible every day, like, that's a discipline. That's not something that you can just do sparingly or, like, you know, because if we leave it to our emotions, some days we're going to want to read the Bible. Most days, we're not. Most days, we're going to be so busy, we don't want to do that. Even if we're not busy, we're going to prefer to be on our phone or watch TV or whatever than read the Bible, but... It takes a lot of discipline um, and understanding like how much we need the Bible. It's the bread of life. Like Jesus said to the devil when the devil tried to tempt him, that man does not live on bread alone, but on the word of God. That is the bread of our life. That is what gives us the spiritual nourishment we need to live a life that honors God and to also live a life that feels satisfying. Like to live a life that bears the fruit of the spirit, peace, joy, love, all that. Like we need a connection with God through his word and also through prayer. And something I also learned too is that sometimes when we read more of the word and we've, we're, we're less ignorant, we're more knowledgeable, it can be tempting to want to correct people all the time or often or at least other Christians. But we need to be careful with that because we don't want to give in to pride in reading God's word. Like reading and knowing God's word is, isn't a tool we should use to correct people all the time and to like bash people, you know, to just correct people in every little thing because the word of God, yes, it's a two-edged sword. It can be used for rebuking and teaching and all of that. But we also need to use our discernment and understand that like it's to sharpen us first and that we should lead by example to others. And if others ask for that advice, you give it to them. But if we're constantly out here trying to correct people because no, like we know more about the Bible than them, then it becomes um, prideful and it can cause division, which is the opposite of the fruit of the spirit. Like it's a fruit of the flesh instead of um, harmony and unity, because you can say, hey, like, you know, can I educate you on that? Can I teach you about this instead of like no you said something that's wrong like get it together you know so just use your discernment when it comes to that because naturally when we know more about the word like not only will it lead us to examine ourselves but it can it can cause us to like judge others like oh look that christian they're not doing this the bible says this and they're not doing that or like this is you know like you can judge other people and everyone else is in a different journey like when i didn't read the word or understand the word even the way i dressed was completely different not super different but different than how i do now like i understand that i should care more about how i treat others and how i act how i speak to others right my character than my physical appearance you know that i should be a modest person who's not trying to flash myself not just my body but in general like be the center of attention in in a negative way because we're also called to be the light and not be hidden right not be a timid person not be an arrogant person be a confident person not in my, not in my personal ability but in god doing everything for the glory of god i was i was different i i carried myself a little differently not super differently but a little differently because god is still working on me i carried myself differently because i just didn't know better just because we know more now and there's still more to know um through reading the bible it doesn't mean that i'm better than somebody else or whatever like it's actually it actually means i'm being held to a higher standard because the more you know the more god will judge you for you know better that person doesn't know better so they're not going to be 
judged as harshly so i would say that like sometimes you could be tempted to be correcting people because now you know a little more but remember the days that you didn't know and the days where you sat in ignorance and also the fact that like we're not perfect and only jesus is perfect and that through our faith in him um we're gonna be saved now if it's someone close to you who you know it's your it's your job to disciple like you've discipled them or whatever then of course like tell them the word but also do that with compassion and love not harshness because jesus is the truth and the light and he spoke harshly to people who were hypocrites like he spoke harshly to the people who were religious leaders who knew the law but didn't live it like he spoke harshly to them but to people who were like in sin like complete sinners like to everyone even though the pharisees were also sinners because we're all sinners but you know what i mean like the people who didn't really know or like for example the adulterous woman who was found in adultery thrown before jesus like hey the, like this woman was found in adultery we need to kill her what do you think um what did he say to her he he didn't condemn her and tell her you hypocrite like he did to the pharisees who knew better he spoke kindly and said go and sin no more whoever is free of sin throw the first rock and everybody left and he said where are your accusers they weren't there anymore why because they realized they they all have sin right so they went away and jesus said to her go and sin no more he wasn't harsh like he was to the pharisees to her because she she was in a vulnerable situation like yes he told her don't go and don't sin but he he didn't tell her like you hypocrite you whatever he spoke to her with love and compassion that's for us too where if somebody is completely ignorant to something you're discipling them we shouldn't speak to them harshly and like this is what the bible says mm -mm, you're doing something wrong but rather with compassion and love because that's who jesus really is and we can only really do that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit through prayer, seeking God in his presence. And also when we read the word and we read that, that Peter said, if anybody asks for the hope that you have, like, why do you have your hope in Jesus? Tell them, but with gentleness and compassion, right? Like doing things compassionately the way Jesus did. Um, and also understanding if somebody is ignorant to something, speak to them with love and compassion. Now, if somebody's a religious leader and they're completely doing what they shouldn't do, then ask God, hey, should I speak to this person? Not harshly, but like, should I be more blunt with this person because they already know? Or like, how you want me to deal with this? I say that because sometimes people could be like, oh, well, Jesus spoke really harshly and this, this, and this. But it's like, yeah, to people who knew better, they know the Pharisees knew better and weren't living it. These people, like the tax collectors, the people who were like blatantly in sin that everybody else would call unrighteous, they they were living a life of sin where they didn't know or follow or pretend to follow the law at all. They acknowledged that they were sinners. That's what I would say. Don't be correcting people like crazy just because you know more now because there's still more to know. And be gentle and kind when teaching and sharing the word because knowing more about God doesn't make you better than anybody else we're all still saved through grace by grace through faith in jesus he did the heavy work just because i know a little bit more don't mean nothing just start small start reading a few verses and ask the holy spirit to help you understand because it's a spiritual book we won't understand the bible through our own understanding and most importantly meditating on the word and putting it to practice because like i said the devil knows the bible the devil knows the word of god but is he living the word of god no he's using it for he used it against jesus to try to get jesus to fall you know like he knows he knows a lot but does that mean that because he knows a lot about god that he's a christian no so same for us like we can know a lot about the bible but if we're not living it what does it matter and one thing that i want to emphasize is that reading the bible on its own isn't enough we need to also pray and worship god because when we pray and worship we are spending time in the presence of god we're asking the holy spirit to fill us and when we walk with the holy spirit and spend time with the holy spirit in prayer and worship that's when we're able to actually do the things the bible tells us to do we can know right or wrong we can know what the bible says i should do and what I, what it says i shouldn't but the only person who will change us is the holy spirit the only person that can change our desires to want the things of god and not the things of the flesh is the holy spirit like we cannot be self-righteous we cannot do this on our own. The Pharisees knew all of the law, yet they didn't live it out. So we, as Christians, can't do this on our own. We need to do it through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, through prayer and um, spending time with Jesus. The Bible will give us the knowledge of what it is we need to do, and the Holy Spirit will give us the power to obey that um, and do so sincerely. Because, for example, the Pharisees, they would give to the poor, 
but they would do it publicly so that other people could see them. The Pharisees would pray in public, but they would do it publicly so that other people could see them. Um, but we know through God's word that Jesus says, when you give to the poor, don't let your right hand know what your left hand did. Something like that. I'm, a par I'm paraphrasing all the way through, but just, I'm gonna put the verse there. Like there's things that we can do that seem good to others, but God sees our heart. We can be praying in public, but God sees our heart and that we're not doing it properly. We're not doing it with the right intentions. We're doing it so other people can see us. So how do we do what God wants in a way that gratifies him? Through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will go within and change our inner desires desires so that we do things right outwardly but also from the inside too. I could know that I should go to church or that I should do this and I should do that and if I'm doing it just because I don't want people to judge me that's different than if I'm doing it because I just simply want to gratify the Lord. That change happens internally. It's an internal change that is then experienced externally and that change only God could do it. So it's not enough to just read the Bible. We need to pray and worship, put those two together so that they work together for us to live a life that honors God and glorifies Him in everything that we do. So I pray that this in some way encouraged you, hopefully it did, and that we can continue this journey together. That's what my channel's about. And that hopefully we can continue just reading the Bible and learning more. Even if you've already read the whole Bible, like continue reading it. The Word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Like every time we read it, we're going to get something new out of it. God's going to speak to us in a different way. So if you've already read it, kudos to you, but keep doing it. And if you already read it, then ask the Holy Spirit to help you apply it and to help you continue ingesting those foods the bible ingesting that bread that that milk as well for those who are new christians that spiritual milk that we need to satisfy us and help us grow in our salvation and in our relationship with god so i really hope this encouraged you if you want to subscribe to watch more videos like this subscribe below i share my personal journey with christ to encourage you through yours so definitely check out my other videos if you're new here as well and yeah keep praying for me i will continue praying for the community that that watches these videos i should pray much more for you guys so if you have any prayer petitions just leave it down below let's continue growing in our relationship with god in love in kindness and all the things that jesus demonstrated not just in our knowledge but in actually being more like jesus god bless you guys 